Can you start? I did it. Okay, okay. Oh, it's live. What's up, guys? I don't know if it's live. I'm going to check on my own YouTube. Wait a second. I'm going to go here. So. Sounds very good. Awesome. Uh, let's check my own channel because I am narcissistic. <laughs> I just want to check if it's working. It's the first time I'm doing a live on YouTube, but apparently it's working. Awesome. What's up? Uh, as it's my first YouTube live stream, I'm going to send you a message on WhatsApp. The idea is that I am creating the AI hub. So the AI hub is what you can see here on the left. After a year of prompt engineering, I came to realize you don't need 10,000 prompts. You don't need 5,000 prompts. You only need ones that actually works and you need a person that is obsessed about making prompts to try them and test them. Um, so this is what I'm going to do right now in a live stream. I want to take things slowly and actually take problems and try to solve it with prompts. I don't know what's going to happen during the live stream. I'm just going to try to make new prompts and hopefully share the results with you. And maybe during the process, you will learn how I'm making prompts. So here we go. I prepared a few prompts um, and I'm going to start with one that is kind of like a no brainer. It's the cover letter. So this is my AI hub. This is what it looks like. Uh, you have all of my stuff. Um, most of it is the mid journey library and um, chat GPT prompt library. And here I'm just asking for testimonials. If you go on business, I have something for job search. So I already made a prompt for, resumes and CVs and you can see you can see it here but I wanted one specifically for cover letters so uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to go on chat GPT obviously I'm always going to use GPT-4 I'm going to say it again but GPT-4 is miles away from GPT-3.5 so always go for GPT-4 now um, the prompt that I um, that I started to use was this one. It's literally a V1. So that's my process. Usually when I'm doing prompt on chat GPT, I always have a V1. And then from that one, I'm going to have a lot of iteration. Um, I'm just going to check who's in the comment section. I can see Anisha. I can even reply to her. Hey Anisha, what's up? Um, I'm just testing the, the live stream on YouTube. So cover letter. The idea that I had was that, uh, oh, I have to connect here. Sorry. I'm just going to connect on my LinkedIn. Uh, oh, just give me a second. I just need to connect on my LinkedIn. Um, By using SMS, I guess. And I'm going to receive an SMS. So the idea is I want people to be able to make cover letters because I hate cover letters. I think they're stupid, uh, to be honest. No one reads it. <laughs> it's just something that you have to do. Um, the way I hired my team, I mostly asked them to do looms, to do videos of them actually talking and sharing what they want to share. And I think you have so much more just from that instead of a, um, instead of a loom. Um, so, so wait, um, Oh, I don't know what I did. I think I just want to do this. Yes. So the idea is I'm going to go on jobs and I'm going to take one, literally the first one. I'm not going to even play with you. I'll literally take the first one. And if I go here, I want a perfect cover letter from this job description. And probably I need context about you. So I can see, I can see it doing it um, with a bit of context or you can even upload your resume. Maybe what would be nice is that you upload your resume as a PDF and 
you add the job description from LinkedIn and ChatGPT makes the cover letter. That would be nice. I can see Haley Joy says, hey Ruben, joining you from South Africa. Super happy to see you. Uh, Zubar Khan say hi. Lorenz said hi. Um, when will you add more prompts in the marketing folder? I'm doing it now. <laughs> this is exactly why we're doing this live streams. So I'm gonna add more prompts on the AI Hub and I want to show you the process. Um, Noam says, wow, opening YouTube and seeing a live from you. Yes, love it. Uh, hi, hi Zubai, Zubair. I'm sorry if I'm uh, butchering your name. So, all right, let's do it. Um, as I said, we want to do this. So that's the, that's the beginning of the prompt. Um, and we want to have this job description. We don't need to browse the internet. The best is always to copy paste. And we want to have a CV as, um, as a PDF. So I don't have any CV, I think. Maybe I have an old one. <laughs> I have to check. Do I have an old CV? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, or maybe I can download a CV. Wait, let me do it. PDF CV in marketing. Template. Um, maybe if I go on image, I can find one from someone. Uh, perfect. This is one. And um, so that's the kind of CV you could have had. I'm going to download it. Uh, let me just check. Um, everything's fine, right? Perfect. And oh, okay. Um, so, okay. And um, we're going to go from here. And now I'm going to review this. So I always start with act like and someone who's a professional. Uh, it puts ChatGPT into this position of doing something directly long. So as soon as you ask for professional, it always goes to a long output. So this is what we're looking for. Your expertise extends to interpreting LinkedIn job description and translating them into compelling narrative that highlights an applicant's strength and fit for the role. Perfect. Uh, so maybe what we need to add is step one. Step one, uh, read my CV that I just attached as a PDF. You must master it completely to, to uh, to use it for the cover letter. Maybe I need to say first what's gonna happen. I like to give it like a trailer right before. Um, and um, uh, you will uh, read my CV and the LinkedIn job description. to write the perfect cover letter. Uh, okay, maybe this guy could be, uh, whoops, maybe this guy could be first. So control X, then I put it here. So here I'm like giving a preview of what's going on. Then step one, you do this, okay. Step two, um, you, read, analyze, and master the following job description from LinkedIn. And I like to say under angle brackets. That's something new that I do now. Uh, I don't know why it feels just better. I saw it from prompt engineer at Claude and Tropic. And my guess is that ChatGPT is just as capable at understanding those examples of angle brackets. Hayley says, I started following you in the early part of the year and you have remained so consistent. Uh, I'm happy to hear it. Uh, and, and the live stream is a new way to do it now. So I'm quite excited. So uh, between angle brackets, angle brackets, and then I just do an angle brackets. Now, the way I do it is that I do this and then I call it a job description from LinkedIn. And then 
I copy it and I just close it now. And here we're going to put our job description. So actually we could do it right away. Uh, and I'm just going to take all of this and I'm going to put it here. And maybe now that I think about it, it would be even better if we also had some uh, information about red, but I feel like it's already here. So maybe we don't need it. Um, okay. Maybe we need to put the exact job titles, you know, maybe I would put it in the beginning Wait, where is it? It's up, up, up. It's right here. Um, so the title is title of the job, title of the job, boom. And, uh, social media influence manager, and then maybe company red London, Germany, and it's remote. Uh, perfect. So we have all of this, then we go down, down, down. So step one, it reads the PDF of our uh, CV. Step two, it reads the job description that we just copy paste. Step three uh, is the following. So step three, your task is to help craft a cover letter tailored to a specific job description in this in the business field. So it doesn't have to say it in the business field, like who cares? Um, to a specific job description and my own CV as a PDF. It's, it's good to repeat what you need to do. Um, so to do this first, you analyze the job description meticulously, identify identifying key skills and qualification required. Then you use your expertise to advise on how to align. Uh, it's not a hypothetical candidate experience. It's my experience on my experience from my CV as a PDF. Whoa, what just happened as a PDF and skills with these requirements. So you don't need this. Then uh, consider elements like industry specific jargon, the company's culture and the role's unique demands. Yes. Provide guidance on structuring the cover letter. No, we don't need this. Um, ensure that the cover letter draft uh, you provide is detailed, reflecting a deep understanding of the business industry and the job role. Your goal is to make the cover letter not just a generic application, but a compelling narrative that position me, not the candidate, that positions me as the ideal fit for the job. And the last one, which I always love, which is take a deep breath and uh, work on it step by step. Amen, Tariq said, hello, Ruben, love from Pakistan. Love you too. Um, happy to see you here. So I'm going to copy this and we go on chat GPT and that's going to be our first test. So I go here, I copy paste this. Um, I like to put a little bit of how to call it, um, formatting before, uh, clicking go, uh, because then I use those links and I put it in the AI hub right here. So when you go on a, on one of the prompts, you can see it here and I like you to have a nice formatting. So, if you don't know how to access it, I put it in the description on YouTube, which is rubenacid.ai and it's a $39 one-time payment. So I did this and now the only missing part is to actually add the, um, the is it this one? Uh, how to call it? The CV. I don't know where I put it. <laughs> Oh, it's this one from, I forgot her name, but we have one. So blah, 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 blah. And let's try. That's what's so exciting with ChatGPT is that I don't know how it's going to do. And um, I'll have to test it and test it again and test it again. But I realized that before I was, I was doing it by myself uh, on my own, uh, on my computer and, um, and I couldn't share the process with you. And I think I feel like the process would make you a better uh, prompt engineer. Um, 
So, okay, it says that it's an AVIF image file, not a PDF, and he wants a PDF. So maybe, okay, don't worry. Uh, we'll find a PDF. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, we'll find one. Let's type PDF CV marketing. PDF CV marketing. Uh, and I want a um, real example. That would be nice. 12 best marketing resume example for 2023. Can I have one that exists from a guy? Okay. Download as PDF. And here we have it. So um, I'm not going to do the mistake of, I'm going to create a new, a new chat, if you don't mind. I go this, I then do this, marketing resume, and now it should work. Um, because I kept saying PDF, so then I think it was mad at me not uploading a PDF. So reading documents. Okay. So interesting. The cover letter is clearly uh, not what we were looking for. What went wrong? What I always do is that now that I have the results, it's clearly not something I wanted to have. I wanted to have three parts uh, of a cover letter. Um, and the thing is, usually what I would uh, have done if I was in your position, I would have said to ChatGPT here, this is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a nice cover letter. Um, but here, since I want to upload it on the AI hub, I need to make the perfect prompt as the first prompt. It's not an easy task, but, um, but here I need to add uh, a perfect cover letter uh, has uh, personal information at the top, multiple paragraphs, and follows a logic known to be the best for a typical cover letter. That's a test. I want to know if I click save and submit, ChatGPT is going to stop being lazy. So there is something about ChatGPT that it's oftentimes lazy. It's going to try to just put you like the first uh, output as fast as possible. So, okay, now it looks like a cover letter. You see, just those two lines that I added and now ChatGPT is like, okay, I'm going to do the thing. But doesn't mean that we have done it. I need to read everything here and most probably I'm going to upgrade it quite a lot. Thomas said, thanks for sharing Ruben. You really help your followers selling these new waters. Greetings from Germany. Uh, Danke schön. Uh, thanks. I, I used to live in Berlin that I have like four words I can say in German. <laughs> genau, ach so, danke, danke schön. So I hope. I hope it's enough for me not to be ashamed, but I'm completely ashamed. Um, okay, so what do we have here? So in the beginning, it's annoying that it says your name when on my PDF, there is my name. So right from the bat, I know I have to change stuff. At the top, so I can say that you can, f oh, oops, stop generating, made a mistake. And here, where is it? Um, that you will find on my PDF. Okay. And now most probably it's going to do a better job. Nope. So there is something faulty probably in the beginning. Okay, your expertise, blah, blah, blah. You're reading CV and a job to write. Blah, blah. Step one, read my CV. I just attach this piece. You will use this information to craft the best cover letter. Step two, you read, analyze, and master the following job description from LinkedIn between angle brackets. This is the company and that will receive your cover letter. Okay. 
job description from LinkedIn. Here it is. And it ends here. Step three, text is to help it to craft, maybe not help, but craft a cover letter tailored to a specific, to my specific LinkedIn job description and my own CV as a PDF to do this first analyze the description. Maybe that's too much. I don't need to say it like a hundred times. Okay. Yes. Yes. Let's try it that way. And I'm hoping for the best. Thomas did an answer for Germany, so I guess he's ashamed. I understand. Uh, um, okay, so again, he's doing, he's giving advice instead of doing it. That's something that ChatGPT do oftentimes. And what I like to put sometimes it's write the cover letter. Don't tell me how to write it. about uh, all caps by the way you can ask me any question i'll answer it but about all caps sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't uh, uh, so no it didn't understood it so answer only with the cover letter Maybe now it understands it. Ah, it's better. Okay. Okay. Um, now it looks good. Now it looks good. The only thing that is missing is the top. Okay, here it is. Yes. Sincerely, Darren Jones, Brooklyn, New York, the email. And maybe it's just missing the LinkedIn profile link, but it's not on my PDF. Uh, I need to check if it's the right one that we had. If I go on history here, was it this one? Darren Jones. I want to check if it actually got the right email and stuff. It did. Uh, okay. So we have a good first draft. Now on the AI hub, I don't want just to give like good prompts, I want to give the best, um, not just something in between. So I want to be sure if you're using this, you're not just having an okay cover letter. I want you to have the best cover letter. Um, what I like here is that it, 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 it's actually using very specific numbers, which is something you really want. But I want to see if it got the job description from red. Uh, okay. Um, this is not enough. I want, uh, uh, remember your, your cover letter must be the most memorable possible. That's one thing. And then here, I would say, uh, use as much wording, descriptions, and characteristics, um, how to say it, and uh, specific needs from the LinkedIn job description as possible. Because you want to match as close as possible the job description and the and the and your PDF. Okay. Okay. Okay, I can already see something I want to change, but that's very typical from ChatGPT. The fact that it uses words like spur-headed. <laughs> no, no one says spur-headed ever. I don't know why the level of English from ChatGPT is like, uh, I don't know, like an old English textbook. Uh, you, don't, you don't sound like this. So I feel like it's a fraud 
to try to sound like this when you don't. And it makes you feel, it makes you feel like you use AI too much when AI should be an upgrade of you, not you sounding completely differently. Uh, use, uh, avoid fancy words. Uh, okay, and then the rest should feel good. Again, if I'm making it live, it's the, it's for it's it's for the ability to interact with you if you if you do want to. If you want, if you want to ask question. Um. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. It created another resume somehow. So no. Sometimes just the words makes it work. So let's try again. Um, I don't know how I can tell. Oh, now I see all the all the messages. Maxim Vidal said hi. Hey, Maxim, how are you? Comment tu vas? Hey guys, ask me anything. Oops, <laughs> I wrote in all caps. Hey guys, ask me anything. Okay, so what do we have? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so yes, uh, that's the one. Hiring manager, blah, blah, blah. Dear hiring manager. Okay. Okay. Did it lie or not? I want to check. That's the kind of stuff you need to check as well. So here, what's interesting is that I asked ChatGPT to be so close to um, to the job description that it invented this. I have led influential marketing campaigns. Uh, generating substance, substantial revenue. And when you check the resume from Darren, it's, I don't know this guy, um, there is no influence marketing. So that's where I draw the line. I asked ChatGPT to do something, then it's up to you to change the final cover letter. I could make um, ChatGPT not say that kind of stuff, but I feel like we would miss something because here if, if i'm darren then i know i need to talk about influence marketing because well the job description is social media and influencer manager so if you don't say anything about influence manager on the first line i mean the first the second paragraph and the first line you're probably screwed you won't be you won't be selected so i'm tempted to let it here and that if I was Darren, I would be like, okay, I need to share something about influence marketing here. Um, and then the rest is actually how the guy did it. Uh, and then it's about the role and how it's aligned with me and why it's exciting. And that he's bilingual in German. Is it true? Uh, again, it's not true. But why did he put it? Because here... It says fluent in English and in German is it central. So again, it's exactly what I just told you. Um, yes, it just lied by saying it's uh, bilingual in German. And here, if you check the, if you check the actual p uh, a PDF of the CV, it doesn't say that you're fluent, but it's kind of like a reminder of if you want that job, well, it's essential. So if you don't speak German, uh, it's probably gonna be hard. Uh, Thomas said, indeed, I didn't understand every word, so your German is still good. I mean, come on, I have four words. <laughs> wonder if I could find a way to use ChatGPT to explain the German language to my American granddaughter. Interesting. Like, use ChatGPT for education? 
uh, to build like um, easy system to learn German, if this is what you mean. I feel like if you want to do something like this, uh, that would be like over engineering it and you should just use um, Duolingo or, or stuff like this. But uh, if you want to be, uh, if you want it to be about the German culture, then maybe that's the right way. Um, Maxim said, super happy to be on this live. Awesome. So not just as a tool to translate, but also to explain the rules. Uh, I can tell you're German. <laughs> the rules, the rules, as much as possible. Um, yeah, you, you can probably do that. Um, I wonder, the, the thing is, I think you don't have a clear idea of what exactly you're looking for. And just like when you're briefing a creative, if you don't know exactly what you want to ask, then it's going to be a challenge uh, to prompt ChatGPT. Uh, the more you know what you want to share, the better. So here, it's example of cover letter. And um, so I'm going to use, I'm going to share that on my AI hub. Uh, this whole this whole prompt now you know the process if you want to have access to it uh, this is the AI hub for those who just arrived I have all of my best prompts and I'm building new ones on live streams so here I'm gonna put it in business and I'm gonna put it in job search uh, I probably do it right after the live I want to do more prompts with you so okay we have one one prompt is done and to keep it, I'm going to do this, uh, oops, do that, copy it, paste it here, and then uh, copy the link and put it at the very top. All right, one done. Then what else can we do? So I had other ones I wanted to share. Oh, I see some comments. Can you show a way to use the chat 3.5 more efficiently for the one who do not have ChatGPT 4? So the problem is you're kind of asking me, like it's exactly the same as asking me that I love cars, but can you please use bicycles? Um, the problem is that I want to know how to drive the car. Uh, I know I won't be using the bicycles. I am hoping that the prompts that I'm doing will work on 3.5, but I'm optimizing for four. Now, the thing is, my life still teaches you about prompt engineering, and it's the exact same concept on 3.5. The only difference is that 3.5 will have a hard time understanding everything you want to say and have a hard time delivering good results. But apart from this, uh, yeah, I'm optimizing for uh, ChatGPT4 because it's just so much better. Um, it's really... Uh, days and nights. Uh, the challenge is in explaining the grammar. Yes, but Thomas, why would you think ChatGPT would be better than YouTube, for example? I think YouTube would be better uh, because someone put efforts into making uh, a super nice YouTube video about exactly this. This is why AI is nice, but we have to remember it doesn't do everything. Uh, for example, if uh, German grammar uh, A1 and if I do this I filter it by the view count it's probably very it's very good videos of uh, German for beginner and ChatGPT yes can help you out but I mean these ones with the most views are already kind of like showing you hey we probably did something good um, Thomas said, you are right. Yes. Uh, this is why it's funny because I, it's been a year I've been sharing about AI and generative AI every day. And you're welcome. Um, and oftentimes people think I use it every time. Like, oh, you go to the shower, you use AI, you, you, you do videos, you use AI, you do this, you use AI. No, I, I'm using AI when it's needed and when it's, uh, when it's the best solution. Here for a fast cover letter with your do job description, and a CV, I think that was the fastest way. I don't think there is any faster way and good way to create a cover letter. But for most of the stuff, we were just as good before AI. 
and uh, it's nice to use it, but we need to use it when it's needed. So that's even why I'm, I'm, I'm doing stuff here during the lives. I want to share the actual way to use AI when it's needed. And when it's needed, I want to use it the best way and to share it with you. Uh, okay, so we have one new prompt on the, on the AI hub. Let's do another one. My idea was um, on when you go on home and you go on writing, there is one about business writing. Uh, for now, we only have translation and I wanted to do a TED talk. So it's gonna be challenging because to write the full TED talk of someone, it's quite long. And if ChatGPT starts by just writing the, the speech right away, it will be bad. I think you should start by making the structure, uh, getting some ideas and then writing the, the, the TED talk. So most probably um, we need to do it step by step and one prompt won't be sufficient, um, if that makes sense. All right, let's go. TED prompt. So that's my first draft. As always, I start with the first draft. Um, I just want to ask a question. Uh, am I still laggy? Uh, on the on the image, yeah. do you think there is a way we can change the settings? Maybe it's the latency. I can check. My latency is so good. I think so. Okay. Uh, you can check settings. Yeah. Can I? Yeah, yeah. Show, show up in I'm the just. Room? I heard for for the people who are listening to us. I just. Someone told me that uh, there is some latency in the image, yes. and we just want to make it sure. Sorry. All good. Maybe that's. No, you see. Okay. Next time. Okay. At least we tried. So this is our first slide. So this is why it might be laggy and with some problems, but we're working on making it fast, efficient, and without any lags, okay? So, act like an accomplished speech writer, public speaking coach with over 20 years, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, so here we're explaining that we wanna do something like a TED talk. Good. Which I is to help me create a public speaking script that resonates with the essence of a TED talk. The script should be thought provoking, inspiring and geared towards a global audience. Yes, yes. Step one being by outlining the key theme or idea of the speech, ensure that idea, this idea is innovative, engaging and relevant to a broad audience. Step two, develop a captivating opening that immediately grab the attention of audience. Um, uh, brainstorm five different, completely different openings and be creative. I want you to select it. Um, step three, structure of the body of the speech. It should flow logically, which each point building upon the last and including real life example, research findings or personal experience to your three key points. So here what's gonna be hard is that, uh, <laughs> it means that I have to imagine your life to help you write, um, a TED talk, but we can ask, I have a prompt to create fake examples for this exact moment. Step four, integrate critical device, storytelling techniques, yes. Conclude with a powerful ending. Offer advice on delivering, no, this we don't need it. Okay. Um, yes, and then this guy, um, your end results is not the full speech. Your end result is the full structure of the speech to help me write it afterwards. Let's try that way. Oh, we forgot the context. 
with some context. I am one of your clients and here is the needed context between angle brackets. And here I put context again, context and slash context. It's a way to put the example. Um, okay, so now we're going to use my super secret prompt. I'm kidding, it's not so secret. It's actually quite simple. It's this guy, and with this guy, I can just do this. It's going to add um, an example between my context because I need an example and I'm lazy. <laughs> Oh my God, I always make an example with ecological. Don't put an example with ecology. Don't do it. So again, I'm explaining what I'm doing, but I'm making a prompt. But the thing is, I need some context about who I am, what I'm doing, all that. So here I'm doing it. And ChatGPT is just doing it. So, no, yeah, I need a, I need a better example. I'm just checking if it's working, but apparently it's working. It's nice. Okay. Okay, I need much more details about me. Be creative, be precise. Also, the topic must be more TED Talk-ish. Do it as a list, as a quick list, because this is probably how you would have done it, a quick list. Shafiq, say hi. Hi, Shafiq. Okay, that's the kind of stuff I wanted. Okay, so I'm gonna take that context, copy it, put it here, erase the formatting. And now I can copy all of it and go on ChatGPT, new text. It's again, it's ChatGPT4. I know not all of you have it, but you should <laughs> uh, if you're using it seriously. And we'll see if it works. I know for a fact it won't because it never works on the first time. And this is what I'm trying to teach you here. The fact that it doesn't work on the first time. You need several iteration between, uh, before having what you need. Interesting. I like the opening. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's rare, but it's pretty good. <laughs> I have to say. It's less going to be about how it starts, but how we can continue from here. So, okay, let's take it step by step. So key theme and idea. Remember, the context that I gave is someone who is... Uh, a cultural anthropologist and he's sharing a study on how digital platform influence cultural and interpersonal dynamics. The fact that you follow me, but we don't know each other, maybe. <laughs> uh, so this theme, explore, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So here, right from the bat, I want a better title. The title is super important to me and to and to SEO YouTube search and to and to YouTube SEO 
make it as catchy and viral as possible. Okay, the fact that I see it's super important to me, it feels like gaslighting, but it works on ChatGPT. It's called emotional prompts. If you say to ChatGPT, it's very important for my career, you have better results. Connected yet alone, unraveling the digital paradox of human bonds. So that's a good name. <laughs> Connected yet alone? Yes. It's pretty good. Maybe unraveling is like, no one uses unraveling, but I already told you, ChatGPT loves using jargon. So maybe again, I'm gonna go back to step one. Don't use jargon or fancy words. I hope it's gonna say again, connected yet alone, because that was awesome. The dual network of digital connectivity, uniting and dividing human relationship. Oh, again, wow, he really wants unraveling. Okay, connected but alone. Yeah, so so I can say there is a problem. Who says juxta juxtaposed? No one. Who says unraveling? So here, use every day's English. And hopefully that one line is gonna make it better. Wow, I say use everyday English. His first word is I'm delighted. He really. Okay, again, see, I'm stopping right away because as soon as I see something I don't like, I wanna prompt it back. Did you know that while millions are chatting online at this very moment, loneliness is at an all time high? It's okay, but I need very specific stuff. So here, be as specific as possible using numbers or quotes if needed. Real numbers and real quotes. And real quotes when necessary. Hopefully that little change will put it in the right track. That unraveling, why? Okay, now the opening is much better. Did you know that the average person spends more than five years on their life on social media? And this is what you're doing right now. <laughs> That's more time that we spend eating or socializing face-to-face, -face. what? <laughs> okay, that's crazy. More time that we spend eating? Am I using social media more than I'm eating? But I'm French, so no. Maybe, maybe if there was a social media where we could eat all together, I'm giving you billion dollar ideas now. Okay, so here you have many ways to start it and you can select the one you prefer. Structure of the speech, okay. Okay, I know what I need to add. Uh, You are a master of TED Talks and the book Talk Like TED. Use this, use this wonderful experience throughout your output. I feel like I could, we could get better still. So as you can see, it's quite long to make a single prompt. But yeah, that's the point. Oh my God, exploring the dichotomy of digital connectivity. Are you shitting me? Maybe I shouldn't say that on YouTube. Hmm. Well, no, if, if I get banned, it becomes... It. It's vital that you sound like a normal person without jargon and fancy words. 
Save it some bits. Let's go. No, really, he wants to unraveling. Whatever happens, we're going to have some unraveling. And again, stay steadily decreasing. It's not precise. Okay, we have to go back in the beginning. The context is good. Or maybe because this is, maybe my context is too complex actually. Ooh, that's why. So I'm gonna go back here and say, do it again with much simpler English. That's why. Because my context was quite Okay, I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna change the context. I think this is why ChatGPT couldn't do it because the context was fancy, but the rest was not. Um, the global tapestry. What is tapestry? I don't even know what is tapestry. So no, it still, still wants to go for fancy. Uh, okay. So I don't know what to say, but I need you to write in an, in an English, uh, in a way that someone who's not a native speaker could always understand you. Maybe if I say it a hundred ways, ways, sometimes you have to be pushy with uh, GPT like you. you say it like a hundred times. The unifying power across time and culture, how ancient stories unite us. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know what's the, what's the matter with weaving of a tapestry. What is this? Still fancy words. What can I do? If you use complex English words, I will stop you. <laughs> I think I said it like a hundred different ways. Tales that bind us a journey through world folklore. Okay, I like the opening. Opening is good. I can still do better. Wait a sec. Edit it. Oh, I know how I can do it. I should say the grade level. So, oh, the problem is that I'm really bad at knowing what is elementary, oh, it's middle school. Use middle school English. Maybe that's the key. I literally made a cheat sheet about it. Come on, Ruben, use the knowledge that you know. Now it's the title that I don't like, so maybe I should be more. Create a title. Made for YouTube SEO. Okay. Again, find out that I'm checking the chat always. So if you want to say hi, you can always say hi. And I'll try to answer your problem. Um, 
Okay. Tales that bind how storytelling connects us across culture. So that's better. Okay. So here, step four, it's telling you how to do it, but not actually doing it. So step four, don't tell me how to do it. Actually do it as a draft. Save and submit. Shartak, please check in, speak in Hindi. Oh, uh, namaskar, namaste, tamiyavad. Uh, <laughs> that's all that I know, but Namaskar, uh, one of my, uh, it's my first employee, she's in, uh, she lives in Delhi, <laughs> that's, she taught me this, so Namaskar. Okay. Is this good? I feel like, okay, I know what's missing. For step one, it must be viral. Maybe if I say this, it's gonna I'm even tempted to say clickbait. Wait, I'm gonna say clickbait, fuck it. Let be viral and clickbait. Because for now he's making like titles that are, ugh, I don't know. I'm on YouTube, I wouldn't click on it. So that's a good way. Okay. AI tool name. This one? <laughs> Chat GPT? No way. It's a very new tool, no one knows. Barely, barely heard of it in 2023. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's Chat GPT. Actually, you can see it on the top left, it, it's Chat GPT 4. Um, so it's the paid version. Okay. I knew this one would be a long one and we didn't even start it to actually make the, the TED talk, but I feel like this is the most important part. So, okay. Um, okay. Okay, I think the surprising facts, facts is better. Uh, Okay, okay. So now he's actually doing the analogy, the vivid imagery, metaphor and personal narrative. So it's good. And for the powerful ending. Okay. So what if now I say, awesome. I will go for the first opening. Now help me now write the full script for my TED talk as a bullet list. Be as precise, detailed, specific, non-generic, catchy, and memorable as possible. Let's go. We'll see if it works. Oh, um, remember each pieces of the talk must be uh, strongly, strongly interlinked, strongly interlinked. Okay. Um, okay. So 
the problem is, see, it didn't link, uh, for example, the opening should be followed later on by the answer of the question from the opening. Sir, network problem, said Sartak. Oh, is there a network problem? Maybe it's your network problem. Maybe you need to change the, um, the definition. If you put it smaller, maybe you can have access to it. I'm sorry to hear. Um, okay. So, uh, again, it didn't answer. It's pointless to have an opening. Uh, oh, I need to stop generating and then do it again. Okay. Okay, now it's good. So you see how I'm doing it? Full structure, then bullet points of each categories, and then uh, great. Now start writing the full script. Let's see if it works. So now, I think ChatGPT is going to have a hard time making a 14, 13, or 12 minute script that is perfect, but I have a starting point now of public speaking. And it's probably a good one. So, um, it's a starting point that you can use for later on. You can expand on it, you can reduce it. And by the way, if you're serious about making presentation, I have someone to recommend. It's Noshin. She was my coach. She's a three times TED Talker. And work with her. She was she was great. Um, ah, that's a shame. We weave and share our story. We stitch together the vast tapestry of human experience. No one talks like this. Don't do this, please. But at least we have quite a nice TED Talk script that looks like something good. Um, I could try. If you want like a bigger introduction, I would do it here. For example. Write the full introduction with much more detail. <coughs> okay. And now it should ha you should have for each part a much bigger. Um, Is it so I want it to be until highlighting cultural diversity. I hope it won't say highlighting cultural diversity. Perfect. So now we have a whole, a whole thing. Um, all right, let's do it. I think that's a good enough prompt. Um, the thing is with the AI hub, so here is the AI hub. It's, uh, you can purchase it at rubenacid.ai. The thing with the AI hub is that here I'm gonna go on writing, business writing, and my prompt's gonna be here. The one I just made, you have the prompt and the example. If in a week, two weeks, three weeks, I find a better way to make a script 
for public speaking using uh, this prompt, I can maybe find a better way to do it, to upgrade the prompt. And all of these upgrades are included when you buy the, when you buy the AI Hub. You can see it here, it's updated. The last time I updated it was the 19th of December, and today I will update it again with, uh, with the TED Talk prompt and with the one we did right before, which was the cover letter. So now I can literally go here, I will uh, copy the link. It's gonna be uh, available on the AI Hub. So I'm gonna put it here, boom. And now I'm gonna change the name of this, rename it. TED Talk, uh, actually I should share the link with the new uh, title, okay. And, uh, oh yeah, I need the first prompt. It's this one. I'm gonna, oh, copy it, oops, copy it. Go here and put it here. And I need to get rid of the context. So I just get rid of this, boom. And here you have it. I will put these two prompts on the AI Hub uh, in writing and in business. So we have two new prompts. I think I'm live since an hour now, so I'll stop it here. If you have any question, now is the moment, uh, but I see that the, the chat is quite calm. Uh, last thing, I will improve the quality of the stream um, and make sure the image is not laggy. You can review it on my, uh, on my uh, YouTube account. You can send me a message on LinkedIn if you need uh, anything else. I'll make sure I will improve it. So 